We often fail to appreciate the beauty or the amount of thought that goes behind everyday things. So in this video, let's take a look at one of my favorite things ever, the mighty A4 paper. In 1947, an organization was formed to provide industrial and commercial standards to be used internationally. It was made up of many national standards organizations to arrive at what would be internationally accepted as the benchmarks for measurement and comparison. This was called ISO, or the International Organization for Standards. Note that it is not an abbreviation, so it's not ISO. It is actually pronounced ISO. I checked. ISO basically makes standards for comparison, for everything you can imagine, from the standard shoe size and wine tasting glass to the standard cup of tea. Check out this awesome video by Tom Scott where he goes into the details of that. In their body of paperwork, ISO have many standards, usually plainly labeled ISO 1, ISO 2 and so on. ISO 1 for the record specifies that any product specifications should be measured at a fixed temperature of 20 degrees Celsius or 68 degrees Fahrenheit for the Americans. But let's get back to the A4 size paper. ISO 216 is the international standard for paper sizes. The North Americans of course chose to go with their own standard of letter, legal, ledger and tabloid paper sizes, which have quite random dimensions. While those do have certain aesthetic looks, they do not hold a candle to the brilliant design of the ISO 216 papers. ISO 216 specifies three series of paper sizes, A, B and C that all have the aspect ratio of square root of 2 to 1. To put it simply, the longer side of the paper is root 2 times the shorter side, or very roughly 1.4 times the shorter side. What's so great about root 2, you ask? Well, in the world of mathematics, there are many important numbers with very interesting properties. Root 2 is an irrational number like pi or e, but it's easy to construct. Imagine a square with all sides of 1 meter, the diagonal line will be root 2 times the length of the sides, hence root 2 meters. It's as simple as that. That's probably why it is believed to be the first known irrational number. A quick reminder if it has been a while since high school. Rational numbers are those which can be expressed as fractions of integers. Or when you write them down with a decimal point, they have a limited number of digits on the right side or they repeat indefinitely. These are rational numbers. Irrational numbers have an infinite number of digits on the right side without any repetition. These are irrational numbers. The German scientist George Christoph Lichtenberg proposed the use of paper sizes with the aspect ratio of root 2 back in 1786. In the following decades, papers using this ratio of length to breadth became quite popular in France and Germany and spread to the rest of the world. It therefore became the international standard and even the United Nations made it their official document format. And I know there are a lot of different sizes of paper in this format, but they all boil down to the same ratio, root 2. The main advantage of a paper with this aspect ratio is that when the longer side is cut in half or folded, the resulting paper has the same aspect ratio. So half of a sheet of paper is like a smaller version of the original paper. If, for example, you use the square paper and cut it in half, you would get a long rectangular sheet instead of a square. And if you kept doing it, you would alternate between the aspect ratio of 1 is to 1 and 2 is to 1, which creates some peculiar problems. The way the ISO standard has been created also means that an A4 paper is basically an A3 paper cut in half, which is an A2 paper cut in half, and so on. The largest size is the A0, which has another interesting property. It is 841 millimeters by 1189 millimeters, which gives it the area of exactly one square meter. Actually, it is 0 0.99949 square meters, but it's a very good approximation. So you get the next size, A1, by folding an A0 sheet in half, which means you also get exactly half the area. If you keep folding or cutting the sheet in half, with every fold, you will get the next size of paper. This is very convenient because if you run out of A4 paper, you can cut an A3 paper in half and get two A4 sheets. Do that with your American letter paper. You can also lay two A4 size papers side by side and get an A3 sheet. You can also fold an A4 sheet in half and get an A5 size brochure. And because the ratio remains the same, you can copy anything from an A3 size paper 
and shrink it down to print on an A4 paper or scale up an A4 document up to an A3 sheet or A2 sheet without any distortion. It also lets you print two A4 pages onto a single sheet side by side so you can condense information for space. I personally end up using this quite a lot for easy reference. The A4 paper is exactly 210 millimeters by 297 millimeters or 8.27 inches by 11.7 inches, which because of that halving of area is exactly 1 16th of a square meter. So if you're an architect who needs to visualize a square meter, just put 16 A4 sheets on the ground in a 4x4 grid and you have one square meter of area. You're welcome. Now, I would have liked to show off an A0 sheet of paper and demonstrate the halving of area and the sizes, but due to current circumstances, I couldn't get any. So I'm going to demonstrate with a few A4 sheets. This is the size of an A0 sheet with exactly one square meter area. You cut it in half and get two A1 size sheets. Cut that in half and you get A2 size sheets, which are quite nice for posters. Do it once more and there's A3 size sheets. All my sketchbooks are A3 and most likely so will yours. Cut it once more and we get down to our favorite A4 size. These are the ones you print literally everything on. Now we can cut them down to A5, which is a great size for a notebook. A6 is a nice pocket notepad, especially because it fits nicely in your back pocket. Go down once more and you get A7, which is a tiny notepad that fits in the breast pocket of your shirt. And A8 is used for things like business cards and maybe small sticky notes. A9 is probably good for sticker labels. And A10 for, I don't know, postage stamps or something. The A4 paper, by the way, is the most widely used paper in the world and is actually quite close in size to the most widely used American paper, the US letter size which is a tiny bit shorter and stouter than A4. The most important of the three series, A, B, and C, is clearly the A series, but the others also have their use. The B series, instead of having an area of exactly one square meter, has a shorter side of one meter on the B0, so they have convenient lengths. This makes them fit in between two A sizes. B series is used for posters, and B5 is actually a very common size for books. The C series is for envelope sizes, so they can fit the A size papers in them perfectly. All have the same aspect ratio though, root 2. I think by this point you will be convinced that the A4 sheet and the ISO standard A series of paper is A1. Sorry. Next time, I get into my favorite GSM of paper. Nah, but seriously, if you like this video, or if you don't agree, go listen to this episode of my podcast. A bit of both where I discuss my obsession of papers and pens with my friend Mihir. The YouTube link is up there or with the use Spotify and other podcast links in the description. Do you have a favorite paper? Do you obsess over similarly specific details of things? Leave a comment. No need for a therapist's number. I have one. Thank you for watching. Bye bye and have a good day. Mm -hmm.